We're going to look at a recording from one of my clients. His name is Larry, and uh, he has asked me to prepare a custom uh, processing preset for him, and we've done that. But what I want to do is use uh, his voice and really illustrate for you the power uh, that just one parametric EQ can have on a voice recording. Uh, Larry's got a Sennheiser 416 that he's using, uh, a Motu 2 audio interface, and he's using Adobe Audition. Um, he has a uh, voiceover booth that he's recording in. It's a 4x6 booth, and he has some small bass traps uh, in the ceiling corners. But he's saying he doesn't really like the sound of his voice. He says, um, originally he told me that he feels like it's too dead. Dead meaning there's absolutely no reflections uh, in the room. I don't think that was the issue. I think there was something else that he was hearing, but let's take a look and see how um, I optimized his recording with just uh, a parametric equalizer. The difference is pretty drastic. Let's hear Larry's voice without any processing. This is just uh, his voice, no EQ. This is raw. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because there was too much else to occupy his mind. The figure hurried away from the doorway so recently exited, but thoughts of recent events filled every brain cell. So I'll start with a clean EQ, and I have kind of a little preference setting that I have here. And well, let's look at the um, spectral analyzer, and we can see uh, it's going to give us some data. When I play his voice, and we're going to see the reading on the EQ, and those are the little squiggly lines that show us what frequency spaces are actually active when he's speaking. It's a real-time analyzer. Water ran everywhere, more than an inch deep. So I'm, I'm hearing that, <laughs> uh, that resonance space. There's a lot going on right here. He has a resonance in that room, which means, and you could see it on the, the spectrum analyzer, it's peaking here more than anywhere else. A more balanced voice recording would be toward, more toward the flat side. It's not going to be exactly flat, but um, you could see it's definitely leaning towards this area right here. Water ran everywhere, more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because there was too much else to occupy his mind. So there's something specific that I'm hearing, and it's it's shouting out to me right now. And let me explain really quickly kind of what's happening. So, um, you know, he has uh, room treatment. He has a booth. That doesn't mean there is not a resonance happening in the booth. And the resonance is a factor of the length, width, and height, and the room that you're in. So what's happening is... Most of the frequencies are being absorbed. There are some frequencies that are traveling um, through the sound treatment, bouncing back off the wall or, or the booth that he has, the wall of the booth, and then going back into his microphone at a slight delay. Depending upon how far away the wall that is reflecting back, whatever frequency is being reflected, it's causing a resonance in that frequency space. So let's see if we can identify that. Um, I, I'm, no, I'm hearing it. It's right here. Water rain. Uh, let me show you something that's really cool about this F6. Uh, uh, someone just asked me, they said, you know, why the F6? Why can't you just, isn't it, isn't it an EQ and EQ? And they, they are, they all do the same thing. But if you are EQing, if you are actually doing the act of EQing, there are some tools that, uh, for instance, this Waves um, parametric EQ offers that I love. And it's one of them is the solo. So when I right click, it shows me, uh, it actually displays and plays for me only the frequencies in the band that I'm moving around. And I let go, and then it's it's giving me the full spectrum again. So it allows me to kind of put a magnifying glass on this band three is the one that I'm going to be moving around. And I can hear exactly that uh, um, resonance. It helps me find the resonance. And I'll show you. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. Ooh, that's the one I'm hearing right there. So I soloed it, I cycled around, and then I, I landed on that one. And it looks like 284 uh, hertz is where the resonance is happening in his booth. So what's happening is that frequency space in his voice is not being uh, absorbed enough with the room treatment that he has. And that could be a factor of how thick the room treatment is. It could be a factor of the material that the room treatment is made out of. But what's happening is it's going right through that room treatment. It's bouncing off the wall and then going back into his microphone. And because it's interacting with the, with the frequencies coming from his voice, so that reflection is interacting with the new frequencies coming from his voice, there's a resonance and a peak. So I'm going to drop this down and we're going to see uh, the difference. This, this will make a pretty big difference. Water ran everywhere, more than an inch deep. There are more resonant spaces, but that's probably the main one, and I'll toggle this on and off so you can hear it. 
Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because there was too much else to occupy his mind. So that's the, definitely the biggest resonance. So what Larry needs to do is he has to make sure he adds more acoustic treatment in his booth. But the key is that treatment needs to be able to absorb. It has to be physically able to absorb frequencies in the 284 or lower frequency space, meaning it's probably got to be at least four or five inches thick and it has to be made of a particular type of material that absorbs low frequencies. And it's it's based on physics and, you know, the, the sound pressure waves this low are actually physically bigger than the sound pressure waves that are of a higher frequency. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because... So let's see if we could find some more of the resonant uh, peaks in this uh, recording. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because there was too much else to occupy his mind. So I'm noticing another peak that's really close to this one. So I could do two things. I could either, um, you know, use another frequency band and kind of widen it out this way. Uh, or I could just widen this particular frequency uh, band. I could widen three by moving the Q wider. But um, depending upon how many we need, let's see if this does it. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because there was... Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because there was too much else to occupy his mind. The figure hurried away from the doorway, so... Okay, so uh, I did a little bit more EQ work, and what I found was um, there was another frequency peak above that three, and... um, there was another one below and uh, these two are really close to each other so inst- instead of widening this um, the cue of number three I just kind of put it right next to it and let me tell you this this is how I do it you know when you when you manipulate the frequencies and you attenuate certain frequency spaces um, you know you use the data of the frequency analyzer and the numbers and uh, and you use that data but you combine it with what you hear and i think the ultimate decision and the final decision you make should be by ear because that's really all that matters right so i'm using the data i'm using the frequency analyzer i'm using the meters to kind of drive me in the right location but um you know the ultimate decision is is with my ears now there's a few other things happening uh there may be something a little bit higher that i'm hearing and i I think there is but Um, You also notice that there's some low material here. I'm not too worried about it, Um, but I'm going to use a high-pass filter. I don't want it to be too steep because that could cause other phase issues, and I don't want to do it too high because I I want maybe to um, bump up some of that lower frequency, and it's really all about the curves here. So I may raise this low end up, but then tighten it up a little bit here. It's, again, manipulating. You know what? It's a good analogy, I think, is um, have you ever seen like a a reenactment of some famous sculptor that's got a hammer and he's got, uh, um, you know, and he's going to town at a big chunk of rock. And and it's like he relieves the rock of the image. You You chip away some of the thickness. You chip away at some of the rock and he keeps chipping in the right places and it reveals the beauty of this amazing statue. That's kind of what we're doing. You know, we're chipping away the uh, material that's not necessary. This material is hiding the true sound and the true uh, clarity of the audio. That's that's kind of a good analogy. It's like, I want to chip away the stuff that's not necessary, which will reveal the true recording because um, there's there, that resonance is, it's too much material and it's kind of blurring the image. Let's listen to before and after what I've done so far, and let's turn this one off. So I'll keep this around 48, 47, and let's hear the EQ with all the work I've done so far. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because there was too much else to occupy his mind. The figure hurried away from the doorway, so recently exited, but thoughts of recent events filled every brain cell. Inside, there was carnage of a rarely seen kind. Okay, I like what I'm hearing so far. I may back off on some of this stuff, maybe now because combined it's 
maybe doing just a little bit too much. You know, I'm constantly going back and refining and, re, you know, just fine tuning things. But I will tell you that since we've moved some of this and so much of this low material that wasn't necessary, you could see there is a deficiency in the volume uh, between before the EQ and after the EQ. So that's what the, um, you know, most plugins will have an output level afterwards. So we're going to boost this up maybe to 3 dB. So um, the volume is the same going in and coming out, except the frequencies have been modified. So let's see if um, now keeping the EQ on, let's see if the volume is more even between before and after the EQ. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because there was too much else to occupy his mind. Disengage the EQ. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because there was too much else to occupy his mind. You know what happens is, I'll draw your ear to something specific, it kind of clears out the mud of the low end. It kind of gives you a more focused sound um and it just uh i think blurry and focus is a good way it just you hear the de you hear the detail in the low end and in in the higher end um it reveals itself a little bit more too you know think about this by removing so much of the low end you're hearing more of the higher end and um that balance or that uh that modification in frequencies is also what you hear as well i do hear another little ringing a little bit higher up and you you may be saying to yourself wow how does he hear that well after doing it over and over again you know practice makes perfect the more you do this the better you will get at it um and i will say that um you know knowing what to listen for and knowing what comes next knowing the system and how knowing the procedure also helps too and that's one of the things that uh, is very um uh, valuable about the eq course that i have if, if you are thinking about wanting to learn more about how to do this uh, i can't tell you how uh, how great that eq course is i'm very very proud of it but I get um, um, just one after the other comments of people that say, oh my God, my my eyes have been opened. My ears have been opened. It's really game changing. Um, I'll put the, uh, the details in the description, but it's called EQ Fundamentals for Voice. And um, if you want to learn how to approach any voice or any piece of music or any instrument or e use an EQ, it really shows you um, what to do and kind of gives you purpose when you're EQ and go, oh, okay, I know what this needs. It's exactly what the course does. Let's see if I can find this, um, this other little resonance that's kind of bothering me. It's up here somewhere. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because there was too much else to occupy his mind. The figure hurried away from the doorway so recently exited, but thoughts of recent events filled every brain cell. Inside, there was carnage Each of them. I think this is the one I'm hearing. Let's see what kind of a difference this makes. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because there was too much else to occupy his mind. The figure hurried away from the doorway so recently exited, but thoughts of recent events filled every brain cell. Inside, there was carnage of a rarely seen kind. Now's a good time to talk about um, just how much EQ is good, how much is necessary, how much you should do. You know, I'll tell you, you know, what we're doing here is fixing. I am trying to put a Band-Aid on the resonance problem in his room. Now, you can do that with EQ, but I'll tell you, nothing, no, no amount of EQ work that I do or manipulating or fine-tuning, nothing is going to sound better than if he was in a room that had better acoustic treatment. So um, understand that, you know, when you use a parametric EQ uh, in a kind of surgical way like this, where we're trying to find a specific overabundant frequency space, and then I'm trying to even things out, you know, I'm using this to fix. I'm using this as a fixing EQ, and I can do all this work, but nothing is going to sound better. So I hear it's a definite improvement. You probably also hear that it's an improvement when I balance out these frequencies. But if you were to add the proper acoustic treatment and have it in the right place to where those resonances weren't there to begin with, or they were less, that would sound even better. And also to give you a good frame of reference, though, you know, these are, these are minuscule type of changes. I would even say his voice sounded fine without any EQ. It sounded okay, but we're really trying to improve is what we're doing. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because there was too much else to occupy his mind. The figure hurried away from the doorway. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because there was too much else to occupy his mind. 
The figure hurried away from the doorway so recently exited, but thoughts of recent events filled every brain cell. Inside, there was carnage of a rarely seen kind. Blood splattered every surface and most of the walls up to and including some of the ceiling surface. Let me direct your attention to something now, too. So from the beginning of when we started, you could see that the average, which is this um, white line here, the average is much more uh, even, right? It's more balanced uh, compared to what we were looking at where there was this big amount of energy here. And, and you could see these are where the resonances in his room are. Now, if he were to change microphones, if he were to change positions, if he were to change directions, uh, like instead of facing the north wall, uh, if that's the way he's facing, it faces the south wall or to the west wall of his booth, any of those changes um, will affect how the reflections are working that'll reflect this eq setting so it won't be as good because we're we're fine-tuning this this is custom for the way that he's capturing his voice right now one of the things i want to do and i feel like i want to do is bump up a little bit of those really that really low end just to give them a little thickness and warmth and so let's see um i want to keep this high pass filter but i want to really just bump up so we're, we're, we're manipulating this curve here so it's more of a uh, a sharp curve and then a drop off. Let's see what that sounds like. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because there was too much else to occupy his mind. The figure hurried away from the doorway so recently exited, but thoughts of recent events filled every brain cell. Inside, there was carnage of a rarely seen kind. Blood splattered every surface and most of the walls up to and including some of the ceiling surface. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Now I'm I'm getting a little bit of a harshness kind of coming through, and we could do a lot of different things. We can add a, a deesser there. I can do a little bit of softening with a different or an EQ to follow this. Um, but one of the things I want to include in in this video is just um, some um, expanding. And uh, Waves has a pretty cool uh, expander. It's called the PS. Is it PSE? Uh, what does that stand for? It stands for the Primary Source Expander. Reduce mic bleed in live shows instantly, or you could use it uh, in a situation like this. Now, since he's got kind of a little bit of noise in his room, and you can hear that in the quiet parts here, let's play. Let's listen to the space. You could hear a little bit of noise if you're using earphones and you're listening kind of uh, closely. With the ceiling surface, no blood was on the shadow's clothing, and no one would think that the deed was done by the shadow. This would be the... You can also hear his edits if you listen really closely. Um, so what I want to try to do is mask some of that stuff. So when he's not speaking or when his the level of his voice goes below a certain threshold, uh, the expander kicks in and really drops down um, what you're hearing. And we're going to be dropping it down, what is it, 18 um, decibels. So that's quite a bit. And I don't want this to be noticeable at all. I really want you to... Um, I want this to be totally transparent. I just want to make his noise go away. So let's hear what that sounds like. I'll, I'll engage this after listening to a little bit of the uh, raw audio. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because there was too much else to occupy his mind. The figure hurried away from the doorway so recently exited, but thoughts of recent events filled every brain cell. Inside, there was car... So, again, you know, you don't want to make it too um, strong because then you notice it. You know, what's the difference between an expander and a gate? What is what is the, uh, the, the final outcome? Really, an expander just works uh, a little more transparently. It's, it's just a little softer. It just kind of moves in a more of a liquid way, whereas a uh, gate is kind of on off and it shuts really quickly and you just notice it more. So an expander is good to use for voice. So um, we haven't done any compression or we haven't done any secondary sweetening EQ, um, but I just wanted to show you how much uh, you can do with an EQ. And uh, again, that course, um, the EQ Fundamentals for Voice, is uh, available on my website. It's a game changer. And it not only shows you how to do this type of um, uh, surgical EQ, but there's a whole additional type of, of EQing procedure that I call sweetening EQ. And once you have uh, your sound balanced, uh, you can do some sweetening in some certain areas that really make uh, a voiceover shine. And um, so if you're interested in improving your voice, I think EQ is really at the basis and it's the, it's the fundamental parts of shaping and manipulating and I'll play this one more time for you, completely disengaging the EQ and the um, expander, and then I'll, I'll engage it to hear the difference. Water ran everywhere more than an inch deep. The dark figure did not worry about this because there was too much else to occupy his mind. 
The figure hurried away from the doorway so recently exited, but thoughts of recent events filled every brain cell. Inside, there was carnage of a rarely seen kind. Blood splattered every surface and most of the walls up to and including some of the ceiling surface. No blood was on the shadow's clothing, and no one would think that the deed was done by the shadow. So you may be the type of person that maybe you like EQ and compression and, and the idea of processing, but it's just not your strength. That's okay. A lot of times, I, I mean, I believe it's a different hat, right? You've got the producer hat where you do the production and the EQ and processing and making your production sound good. But then there's also the, the performer hat where you like just focusing on uh, performing, reading, doing the voiceover uh, itself. And I think they're totally separate. So if, if you only fall in one of those camps, it's okay. Um, a lot of people come to me to help them make their audio have a strong emotional connection with their listener. And, and that could be uh, optimizing the sound, uh, making the uh, recording space sound better, uh, consulting to try to place the sound treatment in the right uh, location or um, getting the right microphone, the right type of equipment. I do all that for my clients. But if you are interested in sending me your voice just to hear what my custom processing sounds like. I, I do that for free. Uh, all you have to do is send me a raw file, which means with no uh, processing on it. And there's a form you fill out. It tells me just a little bit about the equipment you're using, your goals, maybe some of your challenges, so I kind of know where you stand. And, and then I process it, uh, a, a custom processing, so it's it's different for everybody, um, and, and tune it to your mic, to your voice, to your recording space, and I send that back to you so you can get an idea of what it can sound like. And, and it's something I do absolutely free. I'll put that link in, in the description of the video. I hope you found uh, this helpful, and maybe uh, by watching this video today, um, you kind of have a new respect for EQ. I know I do. It, it, it Just a parametric EQ and knowing how to use EQ can really make a big difference in not only the sound, but how you can use your voice and use the emotion and the tools that you have as a voiceover artist to really make a connection with um, the listener. And I think that's cool. That's one of the things I love about all, all this production. Um, again, that EQ course is fantastic, and I, I implore you to check it out. I'm Lenny B. Thanks for watching.